remainder theorem and factor theorem. So these two theorems adds additional information in dealing with the division of polynomials. First, let us start with what is a remainder theorem. So remainder theorem tells that if the polynomial p of x divided by x minus r, the remainder r is a constant and is equal to p of r. So this statement tells that if we divide a polynomial by another polynomial, the remainder that we got still is the same as the remainder if we do use the evaluative process on the given polynomial using the value of x from the other polynomial. So let's have a proof for this one. Example, if we divide x cubed minus 3x squared minus 33x plus 35 by x plus 4, so let us see what will be the remainder for this one. Using synthetic division, so we use those numerical coefficients present on the given polynomial. Then on our left side, we will use the value of x from our divisor, which is negative 4. Then doing the synthetic process, step 1 is we bring down 1. Then we multiply to negative 4, giving us negative 4 as well. Then we add negative 3 and negative 4, and this will give us negative 7. So negative 7 times negative 4 will give us 28. Negative 33 plus 28, giving us negative 5. Then negative 5 times negative 4 give us positive 20, then adding this 35 and 20, so we will get 55. So this 55 is what we do call the remainder. Okay. So now, let us validate if we will have the same remainder if we will use the evaluated process that the remainder theorem is stating. So remember that the given polynomial is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 33x plus 35, and we will evaluate this using the value of x from our divisor. So our divisor is x plus 4, so which means that the value of x is negative 4. So using this value, replacing all of those x from our polynomial, therefore, we will have now our equation becoming p of negative 4 is equal to negative 4 quantity raised to 3 minus 3 times negative 4 quantity raised to 2 minus 33 times negative 4 plus 35. So we further simplify our equation. So simplifying those exponential parts from our equation, thus our equation now becomes p of negative 4 is equal to negative 64. So that came from negative 4 raised to 3. Then minus 3 times 16. So this 16 came from negative 4 raised to 2. So, followed by minus 33 times negative 4 plus 35. So, after we simplify the exponential parts, the next thing is we multiply those terms that requires to be multiplied to further simplified, which are negative 3 times 16 and negative 33 times negative 4. So, upon simplifying those, our equation now becomes P of negative 4 is equal to negative 64 minus 48 plus 132 plus 35. So, this negative 48 came from negative 3 times 16, while this th positive 132 came from negative 33 times negative 4. Okay? Then, the last thing is we combine all of these terms, all of our constants that we do have right now. So, negative 64 minus 48 plus 132 plus 35. So, that will give us P of negative 4 is equal to 55. So, notice that the value that we got upon evaluating using the value of x from our divisor is still the same as the remainder that we got from our synthetic division. So this is what the remainder theorem states. So what's the essence of this? So this idea under remainder theorem can be used if we are plainly asked to look for the remainder. What do I mean with that? So let's have this example. What is the remainder if you divide x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 3 by x minus 5? So let's try to solve this problem using the idea stated under the remainder theorem. So our polynomial is x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. Then we use the evaluative process by using the value of x from our other polynomial. So our polynomial is x minus 5, so meaning that the value of x here is positive 5. So using this positive 5, therefore, our polynomial transform into P of 5 equals 5 raised to 3 minus 4 times 5 raised to 2 minus 7 times 5 plus 3. So step 1, we simplify. 
we simplify first the exponential parts from our polynomial. So we simplify 5 raised to 3 as well as 5 raised to 2, making our equation transform into 125 minus 4 times 25 minus 7 times 5 plus 3. So this 125 came from 5 raised to 3, while this 25 came from 5 raised to 2. Okay. Next thing is we further simplify our equation. So we simplify parts that we can further simplify, specifically those parts that we can do multiplication process. So we can simplify negative 4 times 25 as well as negative 7 times 5. Transforming equation into 125 minus 100, which came from negative 4 times 25, minus 35, which came from negative 7 times 5, then plus 3. So the last thing is we combine all of this constant that we do have, which is 125 minus 100 minus 35 plus 3, giving us the P of 5 is equal to negative 7. So this negative 7 represents the remainder. If we divide x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 3 by x minus 5. Now, this idea under the remainder theorem is just only a suggestion. If you do think that you are better in using the synthetic division in finding the remainder, you may use synthetic division. If you are good in long division, you may also use long division in finding the remainder. So this is just only an alternative under the remainder theorem. And this is what the remainder theorem is all about. Let's have the next theorem, which is factor theorem states that the polynomial p of x has x minus r as a factor if and only if p of r is equal to 0. So we can use this idea under factor theorem if we want to determine if a term is a factor to a polynomial. So remember, a term said to be a factor once you divide a polynomial exactly and having no remainder. For example, is x plus 4 a factor of 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x minus 8? So let us determine this using the idea under the factor theorem. So using the evaluative process, so our polynomial is 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x minus 8. And we are to use substitution and we are to substitute this x by the value of x based on x plus 4. So which means that our x is equal to negative 4. So using that value, what we do have now is p of negative 4 equals 2 times negative 4 raised to 3 plus 7 times negative 4 raised to 2 minus 6 times negative 4 minus 8. So we now simplify our equation starting from the exponential parts or our exponential form. So negative 4 raised to 3 and negative 4 raised to 2. So upon simplifying this, our equation now is 2 times negative 64 plus 7 times 16 minus 6 times negative 4 minus 8. So this negative 64 came from negative 4 raised to 3, while this 16 came from negative 4 raised to 2. So next thing, we simplify these parts that we can further simplify, specifically these terms that, do have, that we are to multiply. Okay. So, 2 times negative 64, 7 times 16, and negative 6 times negative 4. Making our equation transform into, so, negative 128, which came from 2 times negative 64, positive 112, which came from 7 times 16, and positive 24, which came from negative 6 times negative 4. Okay. So, the last thing is we combine all of this. So, negative 128 plus 112 plus 24 minus 8, so this will give us a value of 0. Since our value that we got is 0, meaning the, the polynomial x plus 4 is a factor of 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x minus 8. So this is what the factor theorem is all about. But let us validate this using our synthetic division and let us see if it is really a factor. 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x minus 8. So we are to divide this by x plus 4 because we want to validate if x plus 4 is really a factor of this polynomial. This time we will be using synthetic division. So the first thing is we extract the numerical coefficients present on our polynomial. So these are the numbers 2, positive 7, negative 6, and negative 8. While for the left side, for our divisor which is x plus 4, we will use the value of x. So since we do have x plus 4, therefore the value of x is the opposite of our constants, which is negative 4. So 
So since we are now set, let us start now the synthetic division process. First thing is we, we bring down the first term, so it is 2. Then we multiply 2 times negative 4, that will give us negative 8. Then the next thing is we combine these two, positive 7 plus negative 8, this will give us negative 1. Then negative 1 times negative 4, this will give us positive 4, adding these two again, negative 6 plus 4, that will give us negative 2. Then negative 2 multiplied again to our value on the left side, which is negative 4, and this will give us 8. Then negative 8 plus 8, so the answer is 0. Okay, so since... There is no remainder after using synthetic division, therefore, x plus 4 is really a factor of the polynomial 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 6x minus 8. So, this just simply prove that factor theorem is really a good thing to use if you want to determine if a term is a factor of a given polynomial. But of course, you may use synthetic division if it is the process that you are much used of or you have more mastery in using synthetic division. In determining if a term is a factor of a polynomial, you may use or you may also use long division. So just keep in mind that for a term to be a factor of a polynomial, make sure that there will be no remainder. So hope you understand the difference between remainder theorem and factor theorem and, and how they can be utilized in dealing with such problems just like finding remainder or determining if a term is a factor or not. So thank you for watching. Hope you understand. See you again.